Today, I wanted to talk about Sean Monaghan, Montreal Canadiens guy, and a player who has a really interesting story heading into this upcoming year. Now, the past few days have been filled with a few ups and a few downs for Monaghan. He had been sitting out some practices, he had been placed at the wing, he had been placed at center even, when Alex Newhook was not available. But this is a guy who, after having the career he did with the Calgary Flames, is in no better shape to improve and boost up his stock as a member of the Habs in 23-24. The reason I say that is because last year, when Monaghan was traded from Calgary to Montreal, he was supposed to be a guy a lot of people said could rally and maybe get a bigger role with a Canadiens team that needed more support and more leadership. Monaghan was on the last year of what was a big contract, $6.375 million a year, and if the Montreal Canadiens could retain some of that and send him to another team, there's no telling what a guy who had 48 points in 70 games just a few years ago could be capable of. In fact, he had 17 points in 25 Canadiens games, a very good sample. But Monaghan only played 25 games. He was out in December, he was out for the rest of the year, and now, as a healthy hockey player, heading into a Canadiens lineup that could use the versatility that he provides, there are multiple outcomes as to how this season could go. Although, at the time of recording this audio, it's very apparent that the most likely one appears to be a trade. Monaghan re-signed with the Habs, making $1.9 million a year for one season. 28 years old at the time of recording this audio. He'll be 29 soon, actually, in a matter of days. But Monaghan was recently included on Lyle Richardson, Bleacher Report's most recent seven NHL players on bad teams who could help contenders at the 2024 trade deadline list article. This is going to be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and read what it is the article says about everybody else. But if you scroll down in this post, the second name mentioned is indeed Monaghan. Let's take a look at what Lyle Richardson writes about when it comes to this player. Coming off a seven-year contract with an AAV of 6.4 mil, Monaghan's injury history sent his free agent stock plummeting last year. Nevertheless, the Canadians had seen what they had liked of his performance before he was sidelined, inking him to a June 20 one-year deal. For Monaghan, it's another opportunity to prove that he has put his injury woes behind him and remains an effective middle six center. Meanwhile, he provides the young Canadians roster with invaluable experience and leadership. A healthy and productive 23-24 for Monaghan could earn him a new and perhaps lucrative contract with the Canadians. However, it's more likely he'll be dangled to a playoff contender who could put his skills to good use. Now, when it comes to what teams are apparently in that conversation, we have seen many discussions about the Colorado Avalanche. They seem to be one of the frontrunners for Monaghan last year or last offseason, I guess you could say. But there are a few other pieces that I think highlight extra ideas that are not really the best ideas, but I do think they are interesting enough to talk about. Let's go over to this article right here from August. So this is from a while ago, but it was published on Sportskeeda by Nathan Grella. Sean Monaghan landing spots. Where could the Canadians trade the up and down center? The three teams that are mentioned here are the Rangers, the Red Wings, and the Blackhawks. Now, three original six teams. Some of these teams are good. Other teams are not so great. Others are kind of in the middle. But these are three very different ideas as to where Sean Monaghan could end up. For the Rangers, this is a situation where the team at hand is desperate to make a big splash. They had themselves that third round appearance a few years ago, but now they need to get back in there. And with guys like Alexi Lafreniere not pulling their weight, with all the controversy surrounding him, what this team could use more of is extra players to help him out at center, right? Especially since that's what they've been doing the past few years, just trading for valuable names. Of course, though, cap space is always an issue, but... For a guy like Monaghan, making 1.9 mil against the Canadiens cap, if the Habs decided to retain 50% and send over just a mere... What is that, like... $950,000 of an AAV of a player? That's honestly a pretty good deal, especially if you think Monaghan is able to produce points like he had last season in his short stint with the Habs. If Monaghan is a 40-50 point player in the NHL next year with two-way stability, good playmaking, and versatility in the lineup, not to mention a shot that, I mean, used to be there, he used to be a 30-goal guy, but last year, I mean, six goals, 25 games, the year before that, eight goals, so... 
I feel comfortable saying that Monaghan is more of a playmaker two-way center than a sniper like he had been in the past, but nevertheless, a guy like this in your middle-to-bottom six as a $950,000 player, if you're a Rangers team looking for center depth, this is a pretty good option. And the same could be said about the Detroit Red Wings right after. Now, the Wings are kind of on the cusp outside looking in. They're not really guaranteed to making the playoffs, but if they did make it, I wouldn't be too surprised. If you wanted to say there could be some extra help in the middle, behind Andrew Kopp, behind JT Comfort, and behind Dylan Larkin, then I guess Monaghan is a good choice. I mean, all these guys, not Larkin, but the other two, Kopp, Comfort, and Monaghan, they can all play on the wing. So if you wanted to have some versatility there of two-way responsible guys who can score points, then that is an interesting idea. Of course, though, we did make a video just a few weeks ago talking about the peculiarity of how Comfort and Cop had been acquired by the Wings in back-to-back off-seasons. These guys are very similar players with very similar playing styles and even similar builds. So it's kind of weird that Steve Eiserman dished out what was essentially the same contract to each of them in back-to-back -back years. But nevertheless, because both of them can play on the wing if you really push them to, Monaghan might have an opportunity to open the door to one of those final center spots. And then you have the Chicago Blackhawks, who are kind of on here for whatever reason. I mean, let's read what the article has to say, because at first glance, I mean, Chicago being a bottom feeder team, a Bedard caliber team, getting a player like Monaghan, I mean... The article says this, the Blackhawks have been making moves to reinvigorate their lineup and return to contention. Monaghan's scoring ability and leadership qualities could implement the Blackhawks' core of young talents like Connor Bedard. Chicago could benefit from a more reliable center presence, and Monaghan's proven track record in the NHL could provide stability down the middle. As the team aims to recapture their playoff form, Monaghan could be a pivotal piece in their quest to rise up in the standings. And that's not really how I see it personally. I mean, it would be cool seeing Monaghan and Taylor Hall on the same team. Just, I mean, from a lore perspective, that sounds really interesting. But, of course, this perspective in the article is written with the idea in mind that the Blackhawks would be looking to retain Sean Monaghan and re-sign him to a longer-term deal, keep him on the team, and grow and prosper alongside of guys like Connor Bedard. I don't think there's really any conversation as to where Monaghan could go next as a free agent, but if he has a good season, there's no telling how much he's going to be able to get paid and who's going to give him that dough. This Canadiens team has a lot of spots open in the middle six, so if Monaghan is able to get, let's say, 60 points as a best-case scenario, then he could be setting himself up for a really good payday next year, especially with the cap going up. I can understand why he didn't want to do that this offseason because of his slowed production, because of his limited ice time, and because of the inability of the cap to rise a significant amount. It makes sense for Monaghan to have waited and for the Montreal Canadiens to have granted him that one chance at bolstering his trade value and free agent market value next year. It's a pretty good gesture on both sides. But if you're a fan of any of these teams, the Canadians, let me know your thoughts in the comments section about a Sean Monaghan trade and what you think the Canadians could get in return should they retain 50% of Monaghan's deal and send him to a playoff contender. If you're a fan of the Wings, the Rangers, or the Blackhawks, what are your thoughts on the idea of Monaghan heading over to your team? I can understand all the Blackhawks fans saying, okay, why do we need that guy? That's not really a need. Short-term, immediate good players that can help us out right now. Why not slowly go through the rebuild? I could understand the Red Wings fans saying, hey, we already have Comfort, we have Cop, we have Larkin, we do not need Monaghan, especially if he's going to cost an arm and a leg. If we could resign him, then okay, maybe. But I could totally see the perspective that presents that idea. And then for the Rangers fan base, I mean, you guys are always trying to get better. You guys are always going after big names, and you always seem to get them too, which is the interesting part about that. Is Monaghan next up on that list? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.